Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Astrology News Report, an alternate view of world events as seen through the lens of Vedic Astrology, presented by yours truly, Ron Berger. Today is January 24th, 2015. In this segment, we'll take a look at the week that was, how the planet's positions in the zodiac matched up with the past week's events. Mercury is the planet of travel. When Mercury is retrograde, travel can be disrupted, or the purpose of the trip is somehow short-circuited. Mercury is also the planet of everyday operations. When Mercury gets stressed, normal operations don't work so well. Last week, as Mercury came to the end of its retrograde period, it was simultaneously conjunct Pluto, planet of extreme events, and squared by Uranus, planet of unusual events. The moon moved into position on Friday to form a T-square, a rather nasty alignment that added even more energy for something to happen. So, this took the shape of a monster blizzard hitting the central Atlantic states of the U.S. last Friday. New York City and Washington, D.C. were paralyzed by over two feet of snowfall. Travel bans were issued, highways were shut down, over 8,000 airline flights had to be canceled. New York's Mayor de Blasio threatened anybody caught driving would be subject to arrest. Now for politics. Checking in with the presidential candidate's horse race, the contendants are heading into the first real test, known as the Iowa caucuses. Going back a week ago, last Sunday was the fourth Democratic debate in Charleston, South Carolina, where Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders stopped being nice and actually went at each other. Things got pretty heated at numerous points in the debate. It was clearly the pragmatist, that's Ms. Clinton, versus the idealist, Mr. Sanders. The attacks have continued all week. Mars is the planet of attack and victory. Mars has been in Libra for the last several weeks. So, taking a look at their astrology charts, since Ms. Clinton is Libra rising, she has Mars transiting in her ascendant. This position of Mars, which lasts until February 20th, has obviously been influencing Clinton during the past weeks. She is certainly fired up and has launched continuous attacks on Bernie, seeking to distinguish herself from her Democratic Party rival. Note, too, how Ketu is now on top of her natal moon. This is a rather unfavorable transit for the emotions, making Hillary appear more unstable and erratic than usual. Whereas, for Mr. Sanders, the planet of attack and victory has been transiting through his 11th house of ambitions and goals. This transit of Mars is considered favorable in Vedic astrology in the sense that it lights a fire under your 11th house. Mars makes Bernie more aggressive about accomplishing what he's set out to do. Along with that, the retrograde Jupiter-Rahu conjunction at the end of Leo is now lining up with Bernie's natal Rahu. This is a potent combination. Jupiter is the planet of hope, Rahu is obsession, and here it is in his ninth house of ideology, which is also the house of destiny. Bernie feels sure he's on a roll. Meanwhile, in the Republican circus tent, Ted Cruz and Donald Trump are now duking it out for first place. In Ted Cruz's chart, there are a whole bunch of intense transits. Mr. Cruz has Mars transiting through his second house of speech, 
where it energizes his natal Mars, making him even more combative and argumentative than usual, and likely to use harsh words. Mercury with Pluto transits on top of his natal Mercury, indicating destructive thinking. But the notable pattern is Uranus transiting directly opposite his natal moon from its position in his seventh house, the house of partnership, which is also the house of the direct enemy. So, Uranus opposite natal moon signifies unexpected events and upset coming from the seventh house of the opponent. And just last week, Iowa's popular Republican Governor Terry Branstad called for Ted Cruz's defeat next Tuesday. And on the same day, Sarah Palin, darling of the far right, endorsed Donald Trump. Turning now to Mr. Trump's chart, we see that Mars, the planet of initiative and victory, is transiting through his third house, the house of efforts, use of skills and talents, and self-promotion. This is also considered to be a good transit for Mars in Vedic astrology, and it keeps Mr. Trump energized for the fight. And how about Uranus? In this case, Uranus is directly opposite his natal Jupiter. Trump's natal Jupiter, the planet of beliefs, resides in his second house of speech, indicating he speaks his beliefs, which he surely does. And now the opposition of the planet of the unexpected shows that Mr. Trump is even more inclined to say something surprising, which he certainly did last Saturday. The Donald made the outrageous statement that he could stand in the middle of the street and shoot somebody, and his supporters would still vote for him. An interesting statement, especially in light of the fact that loyalty is such a major item for Leo rising people. And still the presidential race gets weirder and weirder. Last week, Former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg made news when he initiated a preliminary plan to run as an independent. Bloomberg says he's willing to spend $1 billion of his own substantial wealth in the effort. Note that in the USA chart, Uranus, the planet of change and revolution, is transiting directly opposite to, and thus challenging, Saturn, the planet of established order, which occupies the USA 10th house, which stands for the leader, in other words, the executive branch, and other leadership people in the government. This transit is very slow moving. It will be effective for all of 2016, guaranteeing plenty of surprises during the run-up to the election. Already, the number of unconventional candidates is making this election season rather exceptional. So, get out your popcorn. Should be interesting. Okay, that's all the time I have for this week's Review of the Week. You can keep up with daily astrological developments and contribute your own thoughts by following me on Twitter at Astro News Report.